Hello! Today I want to talk to you about something really important that you need to do before you plant your garden, and that is planting it. This doesn't just mean like, oh yeah, I'll plant peas and corn and whatever. Literally, draw a plan, draw a, a map for how you're going to plant and exactly where you're going to plant things. That way you can even calculate how much space each plant takes up and plan accordingly. And it may seem like this is overkill, but trust me, there are so many times when I first started that I started planting and I was like, oh, I'll just spread these out and it's I've got plenty of room. And then I got down to like my favorite thing that I wanted to plant and I didn't have enough room. And um, that can be really frustrating. So it's really important to plan for that reason as well as to group our plant families together, which I've mentioned in past videos. And that way we can rotate our crops from bed to bed each year. And that's actually one of the best things you can do for pest control. Um, certain types of pests like certain families of plants. And a lot of times they lay their eggs in the soil to overwinter so that the next year they have super easy access to the food that they like. This is one of the top principles that I'd love for you guys to learn from me about pest control. It doesn't require you to spray any chemicals, which can be harmful to you, to the environment, to things like bees, which everybody knows have been um, endangered the past few years. And, and it's easy. So let me show you how I do it. I'm going to use a program on my iPad to draw out a very basic plan. You can use a piece of paper. That's what I usually use, but I got this cool new program on my iPad. Gosh, I don't know why my iPad doesn't recognize me. I guess my face changed during pregnancy too. This is called Good Notes. Good Notes is a great app. Um, it's, I can use graph paper or line paper and I use my little pen and I can draw things out and it even makes my lines straight. <laughs> so that's a bonus. Um, check it out. So, all right, let me just show you what I'm working on here. Here it is. Here's my graph paper. Um, I've already drawn out my beds. This is inside the enclosure. Um, so this is kind of where the enclosure entrance is and the door. I do have a curry tree in here. So that one is already, you know, a large portion of it's taken up and it's a little shady. And this one, I have a Kalamondan tree, which is a cool Southeast Asian citrus tree. But then I have this one right here and I have this one, which is a little taller, it's a little deeper. And then I have this whole long one here too. So these are the kind of four main areas I try to rotate um, the main crop families through. Um, last year I had tomatoes here. So I've already decided I'm gonna put tomatoes here. This year I started planting them. You may have seen that in a video recently. Last year I had cucumbers and melons, also known as cucurbits, in this bed. Technically, I like to just keep going kind of clockwise or counterclockwise every year, but this bed, like I said, it's a little shady. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to do brassicas in here, like kale and um, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower and broccoli are there too. I don't really grow those here because um, we're kind of too warm here for them to do that well. I'm gonna put brassicas here. And then I wanna put my, my cucurbits here, cucumbers and melons. Okay, cucurbits. And then that is going to leave this bed open for my celery and carrots. I sometimes, you know, you put you can put cilantro and herbs in there. And I put okra here last year. So I don't want to put them there again. So I may have to put them, just kind of pair them into another bed. And since this one's really long, um, I think I'm going to maybe put the okra at this end of this bed. I also have corn and I grew corn outside of the enclosure 
last year it did well for a while and then something ate it so i'm thinking this year i might try to just stick my corn right in here so <laughs> this is going to be my general plan but you know these kind of encompass larger these are the larger families um, and now I want to get down to specifics a little bit more to just double check my my approach. I'm going to take out all the seed packets that I want to plant this year and try to count and really like at this point really space these things out on this plan and just see if it's as good as I thought it was. I'm going to go through these piles one by one. Um, first of all, I want to talk about brassicas. Um, I only have kale. Um, so that's actually really good for this bed because as I said, it's kind of small and it's a little shady. And actually brassicas in Southern California do much better with a little bit of shade. They're more of a cold season or a cold climate sort of crop, but I do love my kale, so I'm glad that fits in. I'm gonna go ahead and put that over into the done pile. What I have here is lots of stuff. I'm gonna go from the bottom because this is my pri priority. Okay, so I have two cucumbers, two melons, and an okra that I really want to do. Okra, and then two melons and two cucumbers. And I grow vertically um, with my cucumbers and melons because they're vines. So if you put a trellis up, you can support them. Um, and in that way, you have more growing space. They're not kind of falling out of the bed and you know hanging right in the path of bunny rabbits or you know, squirrels or whatever likes to nibble on them. Um, they're going up this trellis. So it's a really, really great way to, um, to make use of small space. All right, so I'm gonna keep the okra in this end and then I'm going to have, so we enter this way. So I like to put my trellises kind of so you can see all of them. So if I have four, which I do, I can go like this and I can still have room for probably four okra, two to three of each of these seeds on the trellis so that, you know, if a couple don't germinate or even if they do, at least I'm covered. If I get too many of them, I can always thin them. So Noir de Carme, melon there. We'll do the ha ogen, ha ogen, melon. We'll do the bait alpha. So we're putting the two Israeli varietals next to each other. Maybe they'll appreciate having a friend. <laughs> and then the Japanese aonaga, aonaga, jibai. So these are cucumbers. And these are melons. Okay, great. Now let's move on to the tomatoes. Um, this is easy. I have already planted and started six varieties. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate the tomatoes so that I have a sort of zigzag pattern like this. And what that does is it gives you just a little bit more space between the plants than if you planted them kind of in squares. You have this whole distance. Um, so in that way, I can try to fit in a couple more plants than I would <laughs> otherwise, because if you don't know yet, I love tomatoes and I love growing them. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that gives me two of each. And as for my peppers, like I said, because I only have peppers left in this family, um, I already have them in pots. I'm gonna start a few more of these in pots. So let's just say peppers in pots. Bikinio. Thai hot. Oh, I had two Thai hots. I'm gonna get rid of one. Um, and the Jimmy Nardello. I love all the names. And these sound so cool when you know these different varieties and you talk about them to your friends. Corn. I have the Damon KS Super Sweet. Mm, Damon K 
KS Super Sweet Corn. All right, that's perfect. I can probably fit, I'll probably do, I could probably do nine in there. They actually do better when they're kind of close together. Four different lettuces, two carrots, and a radish. So these types of seeds are best sown direct. And the reason is that you can fit a lot of them in a small space. So if you try to like start them indoors in like a little pot, then you'll never get them in as close as you want for the optimum productivity. They can all be planted in rows and typically they are in a farm. So what you would do is that you would kind of plan, and I like to, you know, I'm gonna erase this because I just wanna show you how I would might do this. Let's go in a little bit wider. All right, so I might, if I have four lettuces, which I do, and I have two carrots and a radish, I might go, okay, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a row of, oh, okay, and that's one of my other <laughs> projects. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna do a row of lettuce that goes like about here. I'm gonna do another row of lettuce in line. So this is a different row, different type of lettuce. Another type of lettuce and another type of lettuce. So that's my four lettuces. Then I have two carrots and a radish. So let's say these are the radishes. Now, just to really emphasize the difference when they're only like small and also to look kind of cool, I might go, hey, I'm gonna plant my radishes in rows going this way. And they don't need as much room, so I'm gonna plant them in tighter rows, like this. Radishes are really fast. They usually mature from the seed to harvest in a month or a month and a half. So um, that means you can plant some more radishes or some more um, lettuce if you want to. So let's just say we planted that many. And then for our carrots, I have two different types of carrots. Say you wanna plant one type like this. And again, carrots don't need to be that far apart, definitely even less than lettuce. So I'm kind of just giving you an example. That could be one type of carrot, and then I have another type of carrot behind it. When that grows in like that, that looks really cool. So here are my lettuce rows, here are my radishes, and here are my carrots. Okay, so that's pretty cool, I think. Um, and then besides that, I have two types of beans and peas. Um, these ones do not climb, these ones do. I might plant it like I could, for instance, kind of plant this green pea like right here, like maybe plant like three of them, right? Yeah, you can see that, okay, good. Like kind of in the end of this because this right here, this is like a chicken wire corner. Um, <laughs> Rooney's here because it's her, it's her dinner time, isn't it? Is it your dinner? You want dinner? You do? <laughs> okay, I'm almost done. I'll be right there. Okay. Um, so these, bee, these peas will grow up the side of this, and that will look actually really pretty when you're coming up to the entrance, and you have these, like, beautiful peas. Um, but as for my garbanzo beans, um, I'm going to have to find somewhere outside the enclosure to grow them, which is what I did last year, and they were fine. So I'll say garbanzo outside and then oops you can't see that there it is and then these would be peas okay so that's the plan and we'll go upstairs and see if it actually works out but I'm feeling confident and then um, we have cilantro let's make sure we get some cilantro in a pot I think I may have um, bought some some starts of that too, so. 
we're gonna just make sure we get everything we love. All right, so that's it. I drew my plan for my garden and now I can take this outside um, when I'm ready to plant, when I've amended all of my beds with compost and worm castings and fertilizer and I've turned them and they are ready to be planted. I'm gonna take this outside and I'm gonna use it as the blueprint for what I'm planting. And then I'm gonna water and I'm gonna wait and it's gonna be so amazing in a couple of weeks when I can share with you how everything is growing. So try this at home and let me know how it goes. Uh, I hope this was helpful. If so, then please like and subscribe. It means the world to me. And thanks for tuning in this week. I'll see you next week. Bye. Dinner time. Let's go. Let's get your dinner. Let's get it. Oh, it's dinner time. Dinner, 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 dinner. <laughs>